Bwana asifiwe sana. Uko po? Unamka vipi? How was your night? Usiku wako ulikuwaje? Eh? You are unconscious. Thank you. You are like me. Au po naelewa kitu. I was unconscious too. Nashtukia tu nafanya. It's a privilege to stand before you again. Uh, because of sharing the word. Thank you for coming. Now we are talking about the kingdom manifestation. And the first day we talked about the purpose for our creation. That we were created out of nothing and made out of something for dominion, for fruitfulness, and to subdue. And we are created to be a community of kings. That is why Jesus is called the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Uh, and uh, we read Isaiah 9:6. He says, "The Son is given." And a child is born. A child is flesh, which is Jesus. But Christ is God, he is given. <laughs> says, and for his kingdom there shall be no end. So the purpose of God for creating us is that we partake in his government. We said the root word of ecclesia, which is the church, was the Roman rendering of a senate. The senate was uh, the king would choose a few people to help him rule. So they were called the called out ones. So that is the word we, we used to refer to the church, the called out ones. So the church are the called out ones to the Lord's Senate to help him govern. So our purpose is not the embracing of a new religion or another way of ritual but is an accessibility to the rulership of government with Christ. Revelation 5, 9, and 10, we said he has called us out of every tribe. And has made us kings and priests. He has made us kings are a spiritual authority the priests is spiritual authority the kings is dominion authority so God has called us to kingship and governance and we said we gain access in a we said we gain access into the kingdom by the spirit. That means to be born again. This self dies and then we are born afresh into a new kingdom. We told Nicodemus no one can enter the kingdom 
Unless he's born of the word of the word and of the spirit. He says, marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. For whatever is born of flesh is flesh. And whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. So whatever is born of flesh must die. So that you can be born again in the spirit. You gain citizenship by the spirit. Our connection or induction is by the spirit. And our new nature in the kingdom is given to us by the Spirit. And we said it is what gives us the seal that it shows we are in the kingdom. We read Ephesians 1.13 Ephesians 4.13 it's called the Holy Spirit of Promise and the Spirit by whom you were, you were sealed on the day of your redemption. Say the Spirit of God helps you to pray and to worship. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit helps us in our infirmities. Making intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. For he that searches the hearts understands the mind of the Spirit. For he intercedes for us in accordance to the will of God. Romans say 26 and 27. He says that those who worship him must worship him in truth and in the spirit. John 4 verse 24. He say if we are led by the spirit then we receive the affirmation to be children of God. As many as are led of the Spirit, they are the children of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage and to fear, but the spirit of adoption by which we cry out, Abba, Father. For the spirit witnesses with our spirit that we are the children of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 to 16. We say the Spirit of God reveals to us the deep things of God. For no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what the Lord has kept for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches the, deep, the things of God. Yea, the deep things of God. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10. We say the spirit of God gives us boldness to preach the word of God. You shall receive power after this the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria and to the utmost part of the earth. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says when they were praying, the place where they were shook and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. 
Acts chapter 4 verse 31. We say the spirit of God causes us to understand the revelatory knowledge of Jesus Christ. He says when he the spirit whom the father shall send in my name he shall lead you into all the truth and bring into remembrance of whatever things I've said to you. John chapter 14 verse 26 is the spirit of God that enlightens us. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 says for the carnal mind understandeth not the things of the spirit. Neither can he know them for they are foolishness to him because they are spiritually discerned. You cannot understand the things of the spirit unless you catch it by the spirit. The spirit of God that teaches us his word. Say each and every one of you shall be taught of the Lord. So we are taught of the Lord. Say the spirit of God gives you ministry. It is man that confirms it but the spirit gives it to you. Acts 13 verse 2 says after they prayed and fasted the Holy Spirit spoke to them and said separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So ministry comes from the Spirit. He also equips us for that ministry that he has separated us for. Romans chapter 12 verse 6 and 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 8 to 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 28. 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 1 Corinthians Gifts to equip us for ministry. This is the spirit that also produces fruit in us. It produces fruit in us. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. The, oh, the spirit also gives us power over sin. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. He says, once you have the spirit of God and you walk after the spirit, you do not gratify the desires of the flesh. It's God that gives you power over the flesh. So the spirit of God baptizes us into the family of God. And yesterday, briefly, we looked at the state of the church. And where we are, we were comparing it to the woman with the issue of blood. And we say, just like the woman with the issue of blood was uh, dying, so most believers are in that state. They are losing life because the life of a thing is in his blood. The, she was also desperate. Said he had tried all doctors. You see believers trying so many things. Going from meeting to meeting. From church to church. 
and they cannot get help. Lakini hawezi faidika. She was also discouraged. Yeye pia alikuwa ameshushwa. There's a lot of discouragement. Kuna kushushwa kwingi. Like the woman with the issue of blood. Kama mwanamke mwenye alikuwa akitoka damu. She was so discouraged. Alikuwa ameshushwa sana. So she didn't know what to do. Hakujua afanye nini. And because of that state. Kwa sababu ya hali ile. The church tries to do so many things. Kanisa lafanya mambo mengi. You call in different doctors to help. Tunaita madaktari tofauti kwa usaidizi. The first doctor is called Dr. Self Help. Uh, daktari wa kwanza anaitwa daktari wa kibinafsi. Who's going to work on your esteem and your image so that you atafanya kazi hisia zako na chinzi vile unajielewa. So that you can have better self awareness. Ili ukajielewe vema. And maybe eventually you can self actualize. Na pengine ufikie kimo cha kutambulika. Once the doctor herself help finishes her job akimaliza huyo mguzi wa kibinafsi you bring in the doctor confession positive confession unaleta yule daktari wa kuungama vizuri and positive thinking na kufikiria vema so long as you just say it enough you're going to have it useme na utaipata so these people are not concerned with the relationship of god hao watu hawajali sana uhusiano wako na Mwenyezi Mungu. They just want to confess. Lakini wewe ni kuungama tu. And we said that even uh, uh, Goliath was a positive thinker. Na tukasema hata Goliath alikuwa ni mungamanaji wa uh, wa wema. And he was also a positive confessor. Na alikuwa akiungama sana vizuri. But that did not save him. Lakini haikuwa. The difference between David and Goliath was relationship. Na tofauti kati ya Daudi na Goliath ilikuwa ni Because David Kusiano. David knew his God. Daudi alijua Mungu wake. He says you come to me with a spear and a javelin. Anasema unakuja kwangu na mkuki na mshale. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. Lakini naja kwako kwa jina la Mungu. Goliath had positive thinking. Goliath alikuwa ana, anafikiria vema. Had positive confession. Na anaungama vizuri. But he was full of himself. Lakini amejija David his his confession was based on faith. Na Daudi kungamo lake ili ambatana na imani. Faith in his God. Imani kwa Mungu wake. Because the Bible declares kwa sababu Biblia yasema that the word that was preached to us was the same word preached to them. Ya kwamba neno linalo tu ambalo tumehubiriwa ni neno lenye waliubiriwa wale. But the word preached to them lakini neno lenye waliubiriwa did not profit them. Hawakufaidika. Having nalo. not mixed it with faith. Kwa sababu hawakujanganya na imani. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 verse 2. Wa Ibrania 4:2 because you can hear the word so many times but if you can't mix it with faith and faith is relational there's the object of faith faith is not just lying around there is a person of faith your faith in is in someone iko katika mtu fulani not just in something sio tu kwa kitu fulani there are people who have faith in some things kuna watu wenye na imani kwa vitu but we are talking about faith in someone lakini tunaongelea imani kwa which comes out of relationship ambayo yatokana na uhusiano wako so after the the positive confessor daktari has come and left na kama yule mgamanaji mwema ame daktari yule mkuzi amekuja so we, we fly in Dr. Ina Hili. Na tunaleta daktari wa uponyaji wa ndani. telling you now the problem is not you. Na anasema ya kwamba shida sio wewe. Your problem is generational. Anasema shida yako ni ya kijamii. So you are not at fault. Wewe hauna shida. It was done, it was done by your ancestors. Ilikuwa ni mababu zako. So you need to work on your gener- go through some therapy called generational curses breaking. Wewe enenda ukavunje laana za kijamii. And every year you must break them because they prop up sometimes. Na kila mwaka lazima uvunje kwa sababu zinainukanga. And we make seminars on how to overcome generational curses. Na tunatengeneza washa kuhusu kushinda laana za kijamii. Yeah. Because the fault is not you. You are not at fault. Kwa sababu wewe sio mwenye shida. Mm. Blame someone else. Wewe Uh, dai kwa mtu fulani laumu mtu fulani kwa kitambo 
And of late, uh, maybe we have shipped in Dr. Prosperity and Dr. You know, there are so many doctors today. Na, hivi majuzi tumeleta madaktari wengi, madaktari wa upanisi na kadhalika. With those few remarks, ladies and gentlemen, I like to speak about kingdom operations. Kwa mambo hayo machache yenye nimesema, nataka niongee kuhusu I uh, like to talk about how the kingdom of God operates. Because the heart, the heart of any organization or any organization organization in it. Shirika, ndio. Shirika lolote. Eh, is it operations? Ni kwa kutenda kazi. You can have very good strategies. Unaweza kuwa na mpangilio mzuri. And very good uh, policies. Na hata uh, mambo yenye umeweka mikakati mema. And you do very good documentations. Na uweze kuweka uh, ukaziandika vema. But bema. the heart of an organization is its operations. Lakini moyo wa ile kampuni ama because it is operations that links the people of the organization with the people they are serving. Yes, setting of the rules alone is not enough. You go to government offices and they have a very big billboard around their compound. They say this place is corruption free zone. Kienda katika wizara fulani za serikali wameandika kibao kikubwa wameweka pale wanasema hapa hakuna ufisadi hata kidogo and you excited so you come in na wewe una furaha unaingia pale and uh, the clerk tells you na yule mwandishi anakuambia okay i'm going to sign your form nitatia alama kwa hiyo karatasi yako but meanwhile i'll be preparing my lunch lakini uh, and you wish like can we walk outside so that I show you something mm. because what he has written there does not, oh, uh, does not agree with what they are doing it means what they have written and what they, how they are operating is different so operation is very important. Remember in every generation in every group of people God's will is the same. The will of God has never been changed for, since the creation of the earth. But his purpose is that he can raise a community of kings. A community of kings. But in every season and to different groups of people God dispenses his will differently. That means he takes a different orientation in the way he dispenses his will. It is called dispensation. That dispensation what Tanzania? Dispensation. Imefika huko dispensation kweli. Nauliza tu. Inakuja wakati kitu kama nyakati fulani. Eh, majira. Majira. Nyakati fulani. Eh, watu wa Tabora ni majira. Inakuja. Okay. So the will of God is constant. But in every season, with every group of people, there's a way he, he deals with them, uh, if you may. He deals with them, what Tanzania? He deals with them. There is a way God dispenses his will. 
So the way he deals with Adam is not the way he deals with Abraham. And the way he deals with Abraham is not the way he deals with Paul. So in every whatever in every season his will is the same. But his orientation is different. So dispensation is the way God administers his will to a certain group of people at a certain period of time. So in every generation Remember we said yesterday we are coming to a new generation of sons. And Reverend Emily used the word order. You know order is government. Order is government. Order is a system of government. That is why police are called to maintain law and order. They dispense the will of government. And if you are in Kenya, you realize you will not do anything unless you see a police. He must stand and say, now you can go. <laughs> to maintain law and order. So every season to, to a special group of people God dispenses his will differently. It's called dispensation. When Adam was um, at the Garden of Eden before we go all the way to Noah, we are talking about the dispensation of innocence. Hmm? <laughs> so the dispensation of innocence. You know, at that time, says you shall not eat of this tree of good and evil. So the Adam and Eve just knows the Lord. Mm. And the Bible declares that to, to whom, you know, when your mind is pure, everything is pure, isn't it? You might even see something that is not okay, but your mind is pure, so it's pure. So in this period uh, of the dispensation of innocence, we didn't have what we call the knowledge of evil. But then we moved to another period because once we partook of the tree of good and evil, now the Bible declares that our eyes were opened. Because the devil had lied to us that you shall be like God. We didn't know that we were already like God. And every time the devil comes to attack your identity. Remember when John was writing to us the letter 1 John 2. Since I write to you verse, verse 12, I write to you children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you have overcome the evil one. Says I write to you children because you have known the father. I write to you fathers 
because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you are strong the word of God dwells in you and you have overcome the evil one. He says love not the world nor the things that are in the world If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, whether it's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, or the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of this world. When the devil came to Eve, and tested if he says God knows that on the day that you shall eat you shall be like him and the Bible declares Genesis 3 6 that when she saw the pride of the, the lust of the eyes that the fruit was good for food the fruit eh, the fruit the, 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 tree, the fruit was good it was good for food that is the lust of the flesh and it was it was uh, it was pleasant to the eyes the last of the eyes but it was desirable to make one wise that's the pride the pride of life and the devil came to jesus in matthew chapter 4 and he says if you are truly the son of God turn these stones into bread the last of the flesh and he showed him the kingdom the last of the eyes and he says if you worship me I'm going to give you the kingdom the pride of life but what they were attacking is always their identity. That's why Jesus told the disciples, haven't you heard that it is said, ye are gods. You see, God, the devil is attacking your identity and tries to give you some to take you away from the innocence of God the world thinks that the more you know the better you become the world but the Bible teaches us that concerning the things of the world be foolish. So Adam was moved from the dispensation of innocence to dispensation of conscience. Damira. Now, he was not innocent. Now, everything meant something. Now, evil was introduced into the world. And when they are driven off, because the Bible says, and the Lord drove them out of Eden. He was driving them out of the presence of God. Because they would not be allowed to eat of the fruit of life. Because that would be the greatest disaster in history. Because if you eat the the fruit of life in your sinfulness means you live forever as a sinner. Kwa sababu ungekula tunda la uzima katika hali ya dhambi 
So God drove them out for protection. And he said he placed cherubims, the angels, the fighting angels at the eastern side of the, the, the garden to guard the garden. As he prepares for the restoration of Adam and Eve back to the garden of Eden. So God had put in place but he had put in place a plan for their redemption. But before they left remember he had already put in them a prophetic word. He said I'm going to send them out but the woman shall bring forth a seed and that seed shall crush the head of the serpent. Because you can never release anything dead without a prophetic word. The same way Jesus released a prophetic word to Lazarus before he died. He said, his sickness is not unto death. So when he went to the tomb, he just called out that word. Says, Lazarus, come out. Because to Jesus, Lazarus had not died. So he says, your seed, I shall create enmity between you and your seed. And your seed shall crush the head of the serpent. And now the rest of the Bible is just preparing for the fulfillment of that prophetic word. Adam and uh, Eve went away. Adam na awa and then they started living their life. But now their conscience was alive. Their conscience was alive. And God worked with them. Now they were able to distinguish good and evil. Says so now like that man is able to distinguish between good and evil. He shall not stay here lest he partakes of the tree of life and lives forever. After the dispensation of conscience, uh, you'd, uh, you'd see that God is still interested in fulfilling his plan. So he moves us into the next stage of human government. And you see now the Tower of Babel comes. There is organization. It is impossible to do such kind of a project without government, isn't it? Without some form of organization. But the government that we form is about our own mentality, about our own selfishness. We want to say we want to go up to heaven and look and see what God is doing up there. The same mentality that we had at the Garden of Eden because we still want to be like him. So we are preparing a tower that goes on high. And the Bible says, and God came down. Yeah. You know, God comes down many times. Mm. God comes down many times. So he came to see what these guys were doing. Says, Let us go and see what they, they are doing. 
akasema twende tuone hao jamaa wanafanya and they say wow akasema these guys hao jamaa are in one accord wako na nia moja and they are speaking one language na wanaongea lugha moja they shall do whatever they set their minds to do watafanya chochote wazimu yao kufanya so sasa the first pentecost comes ah pentecote ya kwanza inashuka say i shall give them many tongues tuwape dimi nyingi that is why the second pentecost is still at the upper room niposa hata pentecote ya pili iliingia katika chumba the upper room is not built by a human government is built by god himself lakini chumba cha juu hakikuundwa na mwanadamu ama serikali ya mwanadamu i shall give them another language anasema nitawapa lugha tofauti see what can bring down an organization is not the differences chenye kinaweza angusha mradi wowote sio ati tuko tofauti is just language ni lugha the way the senior pastor speaks and the rest of the team speak is different chinzia mchungaji anaongea na chinzia watu wengine wanaongea ni utofauti you only need to release tongues in a place to scatter everything they do kuachilia tu ndimi mahali alafu watu watatawanyika so god comes mungu aja and releases tongues anaachilia ndimi and the first uh, dispersion of the gospel happens people go to different places they they feel they are na like watu wanatawanyika injili ya kwanza watu wanatawanyika sehemu tofauti so this disagreement about uh, the tongues we speak didn't start here it started kitambo sana hmm? jerry 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 what is he talking about <laughs> and you gather the people whose language you hear then you dis- you you go to a place you seek for a place to stay unakusanya watu wenye mnaelewana unaenda kuingia god move from the dispensation of human government mungu akaondoka katika utawala wa wanadamu and then goes to a pagan place na anaingia mahali pa taifa a man na anatafuta anapata mtu finds a man who is worshiping the moon and the sun anapata mtu mwenye anaabudu mwezi na and and calls him na anamuita and says i want to take you to a place na anasema na kupeleka mahali do you know this conference is about taking you to a place je wajua washa hii ni because you are living the land of ur you are getting to the land that i will show you unatoka katika inji ya ur unapelekwa inji so we enter into the dispensation of promise sasa tunaingia katika majira ya ahadi the dispensation of promise majira ya ahadi the book of genesis is just about the creation of man kitabu cha mwanzo ni uumbaji the fall of man kuanguka kwa mwanadamu we find noah tunapata we find babel the, the, the tower of babel tunapata mnara wa babeli and then the rest of the story up to chapter 11 na uh, habari zingine mpaka sura ya 11 and then the rest of the stories are just about one family na uh, wakati mwingi wowote sasa ni story ya jamii moja one man and his three or so boys mtu mmoja na wana watatu ama hivyo so is abraham is jacob sasa ni ibrahim is isaac isaka and his 12 sons na wana wake 12 actually joseph na yusuf after giving the promise and god works with him wakati wa mungu amempa ahadi mungu anatembea naye now we we go until we are done with the book of genesis tunaenda kama tunamalizia kitabu cha and they go to captivity as as as, as moses said uh, prophesied na wanaenda katika utumwa kama vile Musa aliposema we said when we began the first day tulisema tulipoanza mwanzo that we were looking at how matthew has divided the gospel tukaona ya kwamba chinzi ya madhayo amekawanya injili in the five sections according to the pentateuch which is the the torah the, the moses writings sehemu tano kulingana na kitabu za sheria zingine and the first section was just about the pronouncement of the kingdom of god 
Everything that Jesus was declaring was the kingdom of God, nothing else. And then we went to the other section where it was relevant to the people living that day, how the kingdom of God was affecting people. And you find a section of stories and we said every section ends with a teaching. Just like Moses came out of Egypt, we say Jesus came out of Egypt. He was baptized Yesu in the Jordan River. He went to 40 days in the wilderness like Moses. Just like Moses stood at Sinai to receive the law, he gave the B attitudes, which is the sermon on the mountain. And that is when the law was given. We get into the next agenda of God, which is releasing the law. Mm. We come all the way up to the place of grace. And then we get into the dispensation of kingdom. I like not to dwell there very much. Because I wanted to share something today. About how to set the infrastructure but if you say miundombinu, the Kenyans will not understand what it is. No, no, Kenya. Kitu kama structure. Najua structure. Tumnelewa structure. Hiyo wanelewa zaidi kuliko kuliko miundombinu. Lakini wa Tanzania wanelewa miundo <laughs> you know in Kenya if you really speak Swahili you will lose people. Kuna Kiswahili cha Kenya ambacho kinaeleweka. Simmelewa wa Kenya. The infrastructure yeah, for the operation of the kingdom. Mm. And we like to look at um, this guy called Phinehas. Phinehas. Phinehas was the son of Eliezer. Phinehas. Alikuwa ama Phinea ni mwana wa Eliezer. 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 Eliezer, the son of Aaron. Was, was the same of the priesthood. Don't confuse Phinehas with this, the sons of Eli. In First Samuel 1 to 4. First Samuel between First Samuel chapter 1 chapter 1 to chapter 4 is talking about uh, the sons of Eli and them dying at war. You remember that story? Mm. But we want to look at Phinehas. Because Phinehas was a priest. Serving with Moses. It's the same lineage that went up to Israel. If you look at the book of Ezra, it's, it's the same lineage. We're saying that God had favored Phinehas so much. In the Bible, it's called the covenant of peace. You would say that if Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness, then Phineas would have really walked with God until it was counted unto him for righteousness. 
Finea, sema, na Mungu sana, the Bible says that through uh, Phinehas he established what we call the covenant of peace. Kupitia, uh, Fineha, Mungu agano ya amani. So God is going to balance Sasa Mungu kuweka between sawa. how the way he deals with the Israel which is law Fanya kazi na wana Israeli and it deals with the church by grace. Na kanisa kupitia neema. Our balance there is peace. Katikati kwetu pale ni amani. The covenant of peace. Agano ya amani. How do you establish the covenant of peace? Je, utazimikaje uh, agano ya amani? In the kingdom and in the church and because we say the kingdom of god is totally opposite with the way the world operates because the bible tells us that they shall scream and prophesy they shall scream and prophesy the prophets they say peace 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 is coming but there shall be certain destruction meaning the way god brings peace is different from the way the world brings peace file chinzia ufalme waleta amani ni tofauti the way god brings peace is radical and we want to look at these ways that Phinehas was used to bring out peace, the covenant of peace. Let's read Ezra chapter 7 verse 5 just to establish some foundation here. 7 verse 5, Ezra. Ezra 7 the son of Abishua, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. Mwana wa Abishua, mwana wa Phinehasi, mwana wa Eleazari, mwana wa Haruni, Kuhani mkuu. Are you seeing where he's coming from? Je, waona penye anatoka? Because most of us don't read genealogies. Je, wengine wetu hatusomi hizo habari za jamii. The son of Eliab, the son of Elihu. You are wondering why, so what? Hmm? But so much is locked into genealogies. First Chronicles 9.19. First Chronicles chapter 9 verse 19. Mambo ya nyakati wa kwanza. Want to bring your understanding together so that now when we go to eat, we can understand. First Chronicles. Mambo ya nyakati wa kwanza. Chapter 9. Tisa. Verse 19. Mstari wa kumina tisa. Are you able to locate Chronicles? The guy Una at the back. Pata mambo ya nyakati wa kwanza. Mtu mwenye ako kwa mtambo. Chronicles. Mambo ya nyakati wa kwanza. Samuel, first Samuel, second Samuel, first Kings, second Kings, first Chronicles, second Chronicles, you know. The guy is asleep. First Chronicles chapter 9. Mambo ya nyakati wa kwanza tisa. 9.19. Mstari wa kumina tisa. Now let's read together. Tusome pamoja. Twenty. Are you understanding that? Let's go back to 19. Don't just read as a chorus and then it escapes you. It's, it's important for what we're going to talk about. Read as you think. Who? Verse 19. Who? Have you ever heard about him? No. Okay. 
That is, when you are teaching, you write on the side new words. New words. As a teacher, you write new words called vocabulary. All right. The son of? The son of? The son of? Korah. Do you remember the Korahites? Uh, what did they do? The Korahites. They rebelled. Huh? Did the Korahites rebel or Korah? Anyway, let's continue to read from his father's house there. We're in charge of what? Who are in charge of the work of service today? In church. Nani wanasimamia kazi ya bwana? Kazi ya huduma. Hmm? Nani wanasimamia kazi ya bwana? Eh? Ni? Eh, kuhani. Na kuhani ni kina nani? Wachungaji. Unaona hapo ndio tunakosea. Because the one of the problem also we, we, we have become as a church. We have transformed a church into a corporation. Corporation. Shirika. And that is why the the subject of sonship is a problem because we, we see the leader of the church as a CEO. And you know, at work in a corporation, the workers have no relationship with the CEO. It's just work. It's performance management. It's, you discuss performance. You, you don't say, I want you to mentor me or work with me. No, you don't, you don't do that. And because of that, we have now separated what we call the clergy and the laity. We have separated the pew and the pulpit. So it is us versus them. We have also created the entertainment spectator kind of setup. Where you come to watch what is happening here. As the teams come to present. And then at the end of it, we give you what we call the assessment form to rate us how we did. The mentality of a corporation. But the mentality of priesthood says, let us go. Because we are family of priests and kings. Everyone is standing in his place. The presenters are not here. We all do it for the audience of one. It is God that is receiving our worship. So, these were the work, the, the people in charge of the service. Now, let's continue reading. It says, Get keepers of the uh -huh. then their fathers had been sorry, let's go back. Their fathers had been what? Are you seeing the passing on of the baton, the creation of the platform that our bishop was teaching us. So these are the gatekeepers. Do you know who gatekeepers are? Those, those guys, the security guys that are there, what do they do? Huh? There, there are things that are only allowed in the compound, isn't it? So whatever is not allowed in here, they keep it off, isn't it? And whoever is not of this, this, this kind of culture, Na, yeyote mwenye sio wa hii. 
is not allowed, isn't it? So those are gatekeepers and we shall see why that is important. And their fathers were, get, were, were keepers of the entrance. Now let's go to verse 20. And Phinehas, the son of who? Had been what? And the Lord was with him. Was the officer over them. Are you understanding? So far? Are you able to understand? So, these were keepers. These were people in charge of the service. We are still looking at Eliezer, uh, Phinehas. Numbers 332. Numbers. Hesabu. That projection guy is in ICU. Numbers 332. Let's read together. And so you see, it was by heritage. Eh? The, the priesthood was by heritage, okay? So if Eliezer was the father, was the high priest, the priest in those days, it means the son would ascend to what? To priesthood, isn't it? So he was in charge of the priesthood. And this guy was in charge of the priesthood. I want us to read the last one. Uh, Psalms 106 verse 106. Saburi miyamoja na sita. Verse 30. Thelathini. Look at that. It says, Then Phinehas stood up and intervened. And the plague was stopped. Inasema nipo Phinehasi akasimama akafanya hukumu. Tauni ikazuiliwa. Psalms 45 verse 6. Saburi arbana tano mstari wa sita. 45 verse 6, he says, your throne, O God, Inasema enzi yako, e buana, is forever and ever. Ni ya milele na milele. A scepter of righteousness. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Inasema fimbo ya ufalme wako ni fimbo ya adili. And then continue 7. You, are, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. The covenant of peace, the covenant of peace is also spoken indirectly by many names. I want to give you these scriptures, write them down. Sometimes it's called an everlasting covenant. Isaiah 55 verse 3. Isaiah 61 verse 8. Jeremiah 32 verse 40. It's also called an everlasting sign. Isaiah 55 verse 13. It's also called my covenant. Isaiah 59 verse 21. Jeremiah 33 verse 20. Ezekiel 16:60. It's called a covenant. Inaitua agano. Hosea 2 verse 8. Hosea bili nane. It's also called perpetual covenant. Inaitua pia agano inayendelea. Jeremiah 50 verse 5. Jeremiah hamsini mstari watano. It's called an everlasting kingdom. Inaitua ufalme wa melele. Daniel 7 verse 27. 
Danieli 7:27 Tabernacle of David Inaitwa ni hekalu ya Daud Amos 9:11 Amos 9:11 Let a temple Inaitwa kanisa ya baadaye Hegai 2:9 Hagai bili tisa. Zekaraya 8.9. Sakaraya uh, nane tisa. Malakai 3.1. Malaki tatu moja. The covenant of peace. Inaitua agano ya amani. Th- those are for the learners reading. Iyo ni ya watu wenye wanajifunza. Wakufunza. Hey, at your own time when you are doing your study wakati wako unapojisomea the purpose for giving you that is not to fill your notebook ah mambo yenye nakupa sio wewe ujaze kitabu chako is that you can go and regurgitate it ni uende ujisomee having looked at that kama tumeshaangalia hii we want to look at four examples tuangalie mfano nne of how remember kumbuka that is setting the covenant of peace ni kuweka agano ya amani but the foundation thereof is built on righteousness lakini msingi wake umejengwa kwa haki because you have loved righteousness inasema kwa sababu umeipenda haki i've set you above your peers nimekuweka juu ya watu wa kimoyo because you have loved righteousness kwa sababu umependa upenda they can not never be an operation of the kingdom of god in your life in your church hakuwezi kuwa na utendakazi wa ufalme wa Mungu without the atmosphere of righteousness kama hakuna haki peace is important amani ni ya muhimu but peace comes from order lakini amani yaja kama kuna mpangilio and order comes kutisha. from gov- government na ile uh, mpangilio ama kufuata serikali inakuja so we sharia. have said that Phineas has said the covenant of peace sasa Finea amepewa agano ya amani. How did Finas manage to set himself as a covenant of peace ambassador? Je, Finea alijiwekaje kama wakili wa agano ya amani? Number 1. Ya kwanza. Numbers chapter 25. Hesabu 25. Get us Numbers chapter 25 because we want to read together. Tupatie Hesabu 25 kwa sababu tunataka tusome pamoja. Look Ebutazama. What happened here? Chenye kilitendeka hapa. Now Israel remained in Acacia Grove and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. Bas Israeli akakataa shitimu kisha watu wakaanza kusini, kusini pamoja na wanawake wa Moab. Remember Phinehas is a high priest here. Na Finea ni kuhani mkuu hapa. Let's read together so that it helps you stay awake. Tusome pamoja ndipo ukwe makini. And let me ask by the way before we continue how do you manage to sleep at 10 Je wawezaje kulala saa 4 You know this is a house of miracles You know this that is a miracle Hiyo ni mujiza wa ajabu How do you manage to doze at 10 10 o'clock 10 o'clock in the morning Na kwa mafunzo kama haya lakini saa 4 kalala Seriously Wow. Do you have a health problem or what is it? Ni hali ya kiafya, nimesorota kama sit upright, sit upright, sit up. You know you, you can you can help yourself be alright. Na unaweza saidia jirani. Verse 25, let's read number 2. Now in Israel the high priest is Phinehas and they are with Moses and people have now done what we call halotry. Halotry uh, is going after what does not belong to you, to you, isn't it? So they have forsaken their God. They have invited the people to sacrifice uh, sacrifices of their gods and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. Verse 3. Remember kumbuka at the back of your mind 
Phineas is called a servant of peace. Phineas ni mtumwa wa amani. So we are going to see how he's going to manage to establish peace. Tutaona fitizie vile aliweka amani. Number 4. Number I see. Phineas the high priest. And Psalms has told us the book of Psalms that Phineas was able to stay the plague from the camp of Israel. Now Moses has told them let's kill those people. The offenders, the people who have digressed and gone after other gods. But one of the men in the camp who had a Midianite wife, misery, is called misery. It's called misery. The guy is called misery. The wife was called Cosby. 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 Just say what I'm saying. Cosby. Cosby. Yes. So this guy decided to hide the wife. Uyu, mtu ana mfiche, mfiche. And does not terminate. Na hawi. Look at a man who has the zeal for God. Ana, ona, ona mtu mwenye, ana wifu wa the Bible says, and Phineas took a javelin. Uh, and fumo. thrashed it through him. Na akaweza kuadunga ote. And the wife. So that the plague would be stayed from the camp of Israel. For us to experience the move of God in this generation. We must go back to a place where we guard the righteousness in the camp. We have reached a place of a lot of tolerance in the church. The first thing Fine has did was to terminate wrong leadership. Wrong leadership. People who have leadership positions but they are not working right. Says the leader among them we don't talk about it. We don't discuss it. We terminate. Remember he says, so the plague was stopped among the children of Israel. Meaning that if you do not stop some elements in the church, they are going to destroy the whole congregation. We are talking about the covenant of peace. Tunaongea kuhusu uh, agano ya amani. Does this statement look like peace anywhere? Je. Hii huh? <laughs> mambo yenye nasema inakaa kama ya amani popote. What is doing here? Does it look like peace? Chenye anafanya hapa kinakaa kama cha amani hata kidogo. Peace is not the absence of conflict. Ah uh, Peace does not mean agreement. You must destroy the evil in the camp. Otherwise the plague will go on the whole camp. Where is the righteousness in the congregation? 
Where is right living in the congregation? The Bible says when you are choosing a leader, he is a leader of reputation. He is an example to others. He is uh, an example of spiritual conduct. If God has said terminate, you must exterminate no matter the history. You know the problem is familiarity. Once you have stayed for a long time with someone, you, you wonder how am I going to but if you don't do that, the disease just grows. And spreads are called. Listen to me. It is not the gifts you are looking for, the abilities or the gifting of people. You are looking for righteousness in the camp. We have so many gifted people that do not want to live right. Exterminate. Tell your neighbor, exterminate. Exterminate. We are living in what we call false peace. False peace. You know that he is not living right. But you put on a false peace that we are together, yet we are not together. Joshua said, guys of Jerusalem and Israel, choose ye today. Are you this way or that way? To operations can never run unless these elements are root, root, uprooted from the congregation. You know, the mani. camp were discussing it. Ujue, kambi People were thinking about it. Watu People were talking about it. Watu but it took Phinehas to rise up with a javelin. And destroy them. Na do you know God is a destroyer? We know God as a savior and as a loving Lord. A caring God. But he's also a destroyer. You remember Korah? He opens the earth and swallows all of them. For us to bath, to be midwives to what God is about to do, Says, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees, you are not yet there. The next, next story, story exterminate the leader, that's number one, numbers 25. The next, the next time we see uh, this guy is, um, uh, but, but let's read verse 26 first, 25, 26, and, and they hear the next instruction, uh, 25, 26, uh, 16, sorry, 16, let's read 16 and 16. 25, 16, then the Lord spoke, you are reading with me, you are reading with me, then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, uh, Haras, uh -huh. You remember they were killed in the in those days? They harassed us, the Midianites. So he says, harass! Destroy! Imagine God telling you to harass someone. Let's go back to 17. Wasumbue wa Midiani doesn't like, sound like God speaking. You know, we believe the man of God must be, it is well. 
You are okay. You are a blessing to this ministry. You are a blessing to this ministry. We are glad to have you. But you don't imagine a pastor can say, grow up. Leave stupidity. Mm-mm. We say he is not pastoral. <laughs> eh? He is not. Because a pastor must be gentle. Must be patient with you. Cannot ask you if you are late. No. When you come two hours after, it should just say, it is well. This man of God. But the, the pastor who obeys the command of God to harass you. <laughs> say, go and harass him. And attack. Na umpike. Ah, no. <laughs> say, so he says, go and harass. Wasumbue. So they go, Numbers 31. Numbers 31. Hesabu 31. Numbers 31. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Kisha buwana kanena na Musa na kumwambia, Now listen. Are you seeing a problem here? Ebu unaona kuna shida hapa. Are you seeing a problem? Je, unaona shida hapa? Go and take vengeance upon the Midianites. Ah, enda ukawalipise kisasi. Who are the Midianites? Wa Midian ni nani? Moses' wife was a Midianite. Musa ali enda kwa Midian. Mke wa Musa. Ah, mke wa Musa alikuwa Midian. So it means he says go and attack your own family. The Midianites had taken care of Moses for 40 years. Had given him a job. A source of income. They had paid all his bills. Given him a wife. He was talking about attacking his uh, his children's uncles. Maybe his children who could have been named in with some of their names. Number three. What does it say? Hmm? Continue. Mm-hmm.
Now that's fine. So you can see Phineas is working very close with Moses. Midianites are your family. Are your closest people. Are your financiers. These are very difficult people to destroy. But the Bible says harass and attack. If they are not in the faith. Do you know what killed Eli and his priesthood? Was that he had a soft heart with the people that were around him. Mm-mm. He had a soft heart. That is, the, he was told your children are doing this. See, the Lord shall deal with it. The Midianites were the financiers. You see, the Bible has told us that give yourself first before you give whatever you have. The church that does not really need your finance if you can't give your heart. Give your heart and then give whatever you have. But there are people who have given whatever they have but their heart is far, far, far from God. So no matter the check you write, if you're not walking right, you get out of the sanctuary. No matter how related you are, if he's your sister or your brother, you look him in the face and say you cannot do this. Are you understanding friends? That's the covenant of peace. Does it look like making peace? Does it look like making peace? But peace comes through war. Lakini amani huja kwa vita comes through vita. You are either in or uko ndani ama Let's digress a little bit. I can see my time is up. Uh, uh, I'll finish that tomorrow. Because tomorrow. if you look at uh, how uh, Moses was sent to Egypt to deliver the children of Israel. Um, Exodus 8:25. Exodus 8:25. It says. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. And said. Go sacrifice to your God in the land. You see, Moses had told Pharaoh, let my people go. There, there, is, a place, there is a place that God wants us to go so that we can have a festival and worship him. But after a lot of harassment, Pharaoh said, now, I allow you to worship, but, but don't leave the land. Meaning you are worshiping under our laws, under our system. You are just adding religion to what you are doing. Go worship the Lord in the land. Don't leave. Just continue what you're doing among the things that you're doing in this land. What did Moses answer? 26. And Moses said it is not right to do so. 
Musa akasema haistahili tufanye hivyo. We'll be sacrificing the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Kwa sababu tutakuwa tunatolea nguo yetu aibu ya wa. If we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, tukitoa aibu ya wa Misri machoni pao. Then will they not stone us? Je, hawatatupika mawe? You're saying these people are different from us. Anasema hao watu ni tofauti na sisi. We have a different culture in the kingdom. Sisi tuna desturi tofauti. We have a different rule. Tuna We have a different system. Our governance is different. We cannot do what we do under this governance. We must leave the land. What did Pharaoh say? 28. Give us 28. Say so Pharaoh said we are reading together. I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only now you can leave the land but don't, don't go far. Don't be crazy. Don't be a fanatic. Just be gentle, you know, don't go very far from. Just be gentle. Worship God out of gentleness. And keep some of the things. So you just baptize your tradition to Christianity. Instead of taking the liquor you used to take, now you, you, you replace it with, with the soda. And instead of the high priest, the witch doctor, you now represent with, you replace it with a pastor. Na badala ya kwenda kwa mchawi na mkanga kule, we unabadilisha. Instead of calling it a memorial service, you call it a thanksgiving. Badala ya kuita ibada ya makungusho, unaita ibada ya shukrani. Instead of calling remembrance of the bones, maybe you say it is the unveiling of the cross. Badala ya kumbuka mifupa, kumbuka makungusho, unasema na kumbuka salama. Because cross sounds spiritual. Kwa sababu salaba inaka ya kiroho. So, and then attend church when you have time. Na pia ukiwa na muda. So that you are just a good Christian. Kwa uta u. But don't, don't overdo it. The term nowadays is called don't spiritualize. And I'm thinking, what is not spiritual about life? We've learned that money is spiritual, isn't it? We've learned that work is spiritual. We've learned that even sex is spiritual. What is not spiritual? So everything is spiritual. They say, no, don't over spiritualize. Be real. They are not living very far. They are not living very far. Let's look at. Um, Exodus 10 tuangalie kutoka 10 11 11 He says Now you can go wherever you want Sasa unaweza enda penye mnataka But he that are men Lakini nyinyi wanaume Meaning Kumaanisha Leave your children your wealth and only those people that are mature that is why I love the topic we did in the other workshop um, was it the, 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 the adults only workshop about raising a platform uh, when was that? the other day mm, raising a platform for the generations nafikiria napenda ile topic yenye tuliangalia kuhusu kuinua kuchukua kwa kizazi kile that is not we are raising to the we have mentality for generations 
That when we want to pray in our house, we don't tell children, now go and play outside. We want to pray. No, they are part of what we are doing. Not only men shall go. Look at verse 9. Verse 9. Then the Lord, the, the Lord had better be with you when I let you and your little ones go. Beware for evil is ahead of you. Verse 9. Say, Moses said we will go. Let's read together. We'll go with our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters, with our flocks and our herds. We will go. But we must hold our feast. Means we will go far away. Will be as crazy as it can be. We will go with our household. It's good to raise spiritual sons. Tutaenda na wana wetu na bindi zetu. We go with our flocks and our herds. Tutaenda na mifuko zetu. Because we must make a festival. Kwa sababu ni lazima tutengenezee bwana sherehe. To the Lord. Tutengenezee bwana sherehe. So God has called you to lay an infrastructure for his move. Sasa bwana ametaka tukatengeneze the infrastructure for the operation of the kingdom. A hali ya kufanya kazi katika ufalme is hinge on the establishment of the covenant of peace imewezekwa katika uh, agano la amani and the establishment of the covenant of peace na ile kuzimika kwa agano ya amani includes establishing an altar of righteousness ni kuweka madhabahu ya haki you cannot do that unless you root out the evil among you hautafanya hivyo mradi ukaondoshe and you start with the leadership na unaanza na uongozi and then you go to your own very people na unaenda kwa watu wa jamii yako so that the plague of the lord may be stayed from the camp ndio piko ya mungu ika isiendelee kambini i pray that you shall be part of that naomba ya kwamba utakuwa sehemu ya hiyo amen